grid is clear. Kathy Malik holds up the five second board and that tells the drivers within five seconds those red wheel and lights come on. When they go off, we go racing in round two. And we're green! Wow, what a launch by Popes and that is Pat Lindsay's Corvette, absolutely dead stick in the middle of the pack. That was like Randy Post was launched from a camp. He's in a different zip code. Look at oh, Ocala oh. banging with the Crescentini and Descalos. Crescentini's oh. around. Oh, look at the field streaming into him. Those eyes have to be the size of saucers as he watched that entire field come by. Some great driving by the drivers deeper in the pack. They're all clear. And somehow Crescentini, other than that first nudge cal, is unscathed. Well, he's got a lot of work to do now. Nearly 50 cars in this field. It's going to be hard work to get back to the front of this pack. We know he has a fast race car, however. Meanwhile, at the front, Greg, it looks like it's clean sailing as we now look at the GTS contenders. Yep, Brown right in front of Foss. And you'll notice Mike Skeen has made the start. That yellow vet has that white nose, making him fairly easy to pick out. And Foss already starting to heat the pressure on Brown. Got that tail wagging big time through the right-hander. And there you see Tommy Dreesey in the midst of that GTS pack. He didn't have the start he wanted and fell back a bit in that Rio the movie. It's a different sponsor today because the movie he had on the card in round one opened last night. <laughs> Great stuff. Well, Foss is certainly going to be a championship contender. We know his ability. He was the MX-5 Cup champ back in 2008 and rookie of the year in touring car in 2009. And now he's got the heavy muscle underneath him. Meanwhile, out front, Randy Post with a healthy lead. Pat Long has dropped back a position. Sofronis has got around him. There is Steve Ott, the lone Nissan in the field today. Tony Rivera, that incident he had yesterday. A uh, car just too damaged to be able to fix. Oh, and Devin Cates. Boy, there's the big slide for life. Doesn't hit anybody, but that track is a mess. Meanwhile, watching James Sofronis, and uh, as he sits in that beautiful Global Motorsports Group, blue and white Porsche, uh, sits right now in the middle of Post and Long. Oh, Sofronis catching that big slide, Cal. Well, I think what Randy Post is doing, he's looking up ahead. You can see all the carnage there where Devin Cates took that ride. He got on the brakes really early, and James nearly got caught by surprise there. Good avoidance. Oh, and James, you can't even see him behind Popes. Is he going to try and make a move? He moves to the inside. Sofronis down the inside. Popes leaves him room. He's got him. He's through. James Superb Sofronis. move. What a power move by James Sofronis. He wants the lead. He wants it early. Finished third here yesterday. He wants more today. And as Randy working through some traffic, got a great shot of that beautiful blue Mustang of Jason DeSalvo, who is putting in a superb run today, coming up through the pack, as you see Sofronis working some lap traffic as well, going by Nick Asayan in that HPD real-time Acura. Sofronis, that Global Motorsports Group Porsche, just singing right now, as uh, he's got himself a lot of room. Oh, and we've had a big shunt. That's Carolyn Quila who's up on the tires, and that looks like Ernie Jakubowski and that Mantis Racing Porsche Cayman has been involved as well. And if they try to go side by side through that section of racetrack, there's really no room, and we can see <laughs> she has perched atop those tires, but maybe there's not too much damage. Here we look at it again, and that's exactly what happened. Jakubowski went to the inside, got pinched a little bit. And as a result, boy, did Carolyn have a high-speed ride over and up on top of those tires. All right, here we go. About to start lap 18. The VW Pace car is in, and Sofronis brings it down nice and slow. They've been told to maintain the pace that the Pace car sets, and uh, been pretty slow through that last turn, and these guys are doing it to perfection. And also, it doesn't bother him too much that it does nullify some of that Volvo's boost. Now we go green, and again, Gaples and Crescentini make huge moves. This time, Popes moves over well to defend. I think he learned his lesson. He did. He got absolutely swamped oh. here yesterday. Now he's going side by side with Daskalos down into turn one, but Popes hangs on to third for now. Wow, and you also saw Crescentini going in way deep on the brakes. He got those two caddies kind of shifting offline just a little bit. There is Dino. Remember, after that first lap start moment in turn one, he's come all the way through this field. Fantastic drive by him. He's now starting to put the pressure on that skiing in front of him along with another Porsche. So there's a fierce battle, but this is really the break that Pat Long wanted. Sofronis had really gapped the rest of this field, but with that caution period, everyone stacked back up. Can Pat Long now pants for his second win of the weekend? Look at Tony Gables, that black Kleinschmidt, uh, black dog speed shop Corvette, continuing to hold off. Mike Skeen, Skeen all over the back of him. Skeen takes a look. Boy, it's a tough place to make a pass down into this turn, but he gets in clean. And I think Tony realized that he was through, gave him lots of room. Boy, you mess it up there in that battle for fifth, it's going to go badly. And I think everybody using their heads at that moment. Up front, Pat Long now right 
in the pressure zone for James Sofronis. He can no longer run his lines. He gets a little bit wide there, misses the apex. Ken Long take advantage. Crescentini down to the inside. Oh, and Paul Brown damage to the left front corner. It's cut the tire down, and that is uh, smoke that is pouring off of that damaged wheel. He's just trying to limp it around to the pit. So after a great run yesterday, our pole sitter struggling. Cal, here's what happened. Goes down to the inside oh. of turn eight. There's not enough room there. Clips the car. And then coming on to the back straightaway there, just runs out wide. I think he might have brushed the wall there. And that's what cut down that tire. He's close to pit lane, but it's still going to cost him valuable time. And these teams really aren't geared up to make fast and rapid tire changes. So this is going to cost him monumental track position right now. Meanwhile, Eric Foss, unbelievable drive he's put in at with Paul Brown's problems. Remember that number 50 we saw with the damage. And that is, I think, Nick Asayan has gone around over in turn one, also in that GTS category. That Eric Foss now has a fairly comfortable little lead in at this point. Asayan, don't know if he got any help. Cal, we're going to take a look and see if we can figure out what may happen. Yeah, coming down into, oh, oh DeSalvo yeah. there got into it with another Mustang, and that got into Nick Asayan. Really just an innocent bystander on that one for Nick, but he loses many positions there, as you can see the field stream by. You are watching an interesting development here. James Sofronis, Calvin, he has caught some serious traffic here. He gets by cleanly. Boy, he may have needed that. Let's see. Yes, Long able to sneak through as well. And another nice move by Sofronis, but Long is able to follow him through. That big margin Sofronis had is gone. It is gone. It basically went away after that caution period, and Pat has really stayed within a second or so of the rear bumper of that GMG Porsche. Oh, Popes! Major damage to the right front corner. What a surprise. The guy he's won every time he started on the pole here at St. Petersburg, it's not going to happen again. Oh, serious contact, as you point out. The only question is, was he helped or did it happen on his own? The car, he's trying to get it. I think being Randy Popes, he's just trying to move it out of harm's way and get out of the way of oncoming traffic to let this race be able to continue. But that is one damaged Volvo. Well, he's got three-wheel drive right now because yeah. one of them's not working, that's for sure. Steam emanating out of the hood. That car has been seriously harmed. And the good news is, obviously, if Randy was able to drive it away, uh, he's doing okay. Let's see if we can suss out what happened here, Cal. Yeah, we're on board with him now as he's going through turn three. Oh, and he just gets wide, just didn't have the grip. He just plows into that outside barrier, so I'm not sure. I didn't see any other traffic, anyone else involved pushing him out wide. But look at this, Pat Long has got the lead. Well, we saw them in some serious traffic, and Long able to get through, see if we can find out what happened. On board with Sophronis. Whoo! Same place where Pat Long got the lead from Randy Post, but this time he dives to the inside. Boy, Pat Long has no problems running side by side in awfully fast sections. A track, and look at this battle in the GTS category. Foss now has PD Cunningham all over his deck. Here we go, working traffic, they're coming through. Foss, oh, he gets PD hooks it up there. Ooh. And then Randy Post is on the exit of that corner. That was wild, that was really crazy. Let's see, that's Mike Skeen coming by, and that may have actually helped Foss because there was nothing PD could do with Skeen coming up the inside. He had to wait, Foss able to hang on. Now as they work through the very tricky S's section here on this uh, St. Petersburg street circuit, and Foss showing some smoke as well. He does, but PD Cunningham knows there's strengths and weaknesses with his car. But meanwhile, back up front, Pat Long is now feeling the pressure from Sofronis once again. This traffic again plays a factor. And it is going to be Long. Oh, and he got through that car in perfect position. And it really parked Sofronis. And Sofronis, as a result, lost 3-4 car lengths, Cal. And the white flag is coming out. One lap to go. The question is, can they catch Long? And if they catch traffic, can Long defend? Well, he's got the experience, certainly. I mean, he's one of the masters behind the wheels of one of these Porsches. He's really established himself as one of North America's leading lights in sports car racing, has won all of the big endurance classics, and now on his debut at St. Petersburg for this True Speed team. He's looked for his second win of the weekend. A great run so far, but there's still half a lap to go. Anything can happen as he really gets on the power early. Sofronis looks to the inside. Oh, traffic, traffic right there. One of the momentum Camaros. That's Artie Topi in the momentum car. Parked long, but then when they went through, it was a section of track where nothing Sofronis could do, just not wide enough to try anything, and he stays tucked in behind Long. Pat Long's in one of the 2010 Porsches. 
That number 14 of James Safrona is one of the new 2011 cars. There's not much difference between them. As you can see, they're going neck and neck here for the victory with just a few corners to go. Heading up into that very quick right-left combination. That is 11 there, then 12 to the left, and it's all about now, and there is some traffic. It depends on the launch out of this turn. Doesn't look like Pat's going to get hung up, exiting the corner. Rolls into the throttle. Safrona's giving it everything he can, and not enough. Pat Long dives to the checker to protect and he doubles it up, he sweeps the weekend, and Safronis, who led by far and away the most laps in this one, must be gutted. He really has to be, I mean, it looked like he had the race under control, that caution really erased the lead that it built up over the rest of this field, but Pat Long, using his experience, and now Fast coming through for that GTS victory. He's got a car in between, he and Cunningham, actually a few cars, so Foss is gonna be able to hang on, as up front you can see all the smoke from Long's car, and watch for it here. There is Petey bringing it home in second. And Eric Foss, that great story continues for this very special vehicle uh, with that charity work that this team and the team that sold it at the auction have been able to do. And Foss too says, I want a piece of that donut and starts having at it here. What a great celebration for this man. Welcome back to World Challenge. It's been great having him along. <laughs> that is really, really cool. He's got the horsepower to do it and he's burning up those Pirellis. Well, from what we've seen already, they can take it. Look at Tristan Herbert. He's got Lawson Ossenbach has reeled him in. This is for the win. Onto the front straight they go. Lawson thinks about it. Herbert, a little bit better exit. He draws away. I think he has just become the poster boy for SCCA Regional Club Racing, making a step and winning in World Challenge in only his third pro race. What an amazing story for this young man. With that, Cal, I'm going to head down to Victory Circle. I leave it to you.